So we're going to talk now about why the base member initialization section is so important in C++. And the place to go to find the code I'm going to show you in a minute is this repository. This is my uh, C++ STL S-02 2.3 2.3A folder. And uh, I'm going to switch over to my interactive development environment in a moment. But this is where you can follow along with this material. As I mentioned, I had originally planned to cover this in a uh, couple weeks, but it was a good question on the discussion forum. So let's go ahead and talk about it now. So here's the code we're going to show. Uh, let me, I'm going to spend a little time kind of setting this up so it'll make more sense. And then uh, we'll talk about the base member initialization section and why it's so important. So the particular program we're going to do here is we're going to showcase a little class I wrote called Pair. Now, there's already a C++ standard template library class called Pair. So to avoid con confusion and conflicts with that, I put this into a namespace that I called my Pair, which is not the most inspired name, obviously, but it was just for me to hide this implementation because it's different from the one that's in STL, although it's kind of along the same lines. So here's the class called pair. As you can see, it's parameterized by type name T. And we haven't really talked about templates a whole lot yet, but hopefully you, you can grasp the concept because this use case is very simple. Unlike the STL pair, which takes two parameters, a T and a U, so you can have two different parameters, this is going to have a pair of the same parameters. And then I'm going to have a, um, a constructor here. And as you can see, I'm going to toggle back and forth between pass by value semantics and pass by reference semantics. And this is going to be used to help illustrate the, the differences between different kinds of things, uh, between the base member initialization section and, and other ways to do things. So let's go ahead and take a look first at the, the pair constructor when we don't pass by value. In fact, we may not even talk about pass by value as much as we're going to talk about the base member initialization section semantics. So let's go ahead and take a look at the implementation of this. And you can see here that this is the version we're looking at. We're passing this by reference. And the two alternatives we're going to look at here is first, we're going to look at this approach here, where we're actually doing the initialization in the base member initialization section. And then we're going to look at an alternative version where rather than doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to do the following. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit more clear. The second version we're going to look at, we're going to comment out the base member initialization section entirely. We're not going to use the base member initialization section. And instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do the assignment in here using basically first equal to F and second equal to S. So that's going to be the alternative way that we're going to do this. And what you're going to see is that there's a lot more overhead for doing it that way. So let me, let me comment that code out for a moment. And we will go ahead and comment this code back in. So by, to start out with, I'm going to do it the, the right way. And, and the right way here is defined as the way that uses the base member initialization section. Now, it turns out that there's a number of things you need to be able to do with the base member initialization section. Uh, one thing you need to be able to use it for is to be able to pass parameters to superclass or base class constructors. We're not showing that example here. Another thing you need to be able to use it for is to be able to initialize uh, references. If you have a class that has data members that are references, you have to initialize them in the base member initialization section. Likewise, Back in the old days, if you had const objects in your class, you had to initialize them in the base member initialization section. C++ has improved that over the years, so you no longer have to do that uh, for everything, but, but uh, it's still possible to do that. And the main thing that we're doing it for here in this example is to get so-called initialization semantics for assigning the data members as opposed to doing assignment semantics. And you'll see in a minute why this is a big deal. Okay, so that's kind of the setup for this. If you go back over to the main program, you'll see that we're going to define a pair called iPair, which probably should be changed to something more uh, instructive than iPair. iPair is kind of a kind of a lame name. Let's let's refactor that and let's call it uh, 
I don't know, um, string pair or something like that. And uh, so the, the purpose of this is to demonstrate the impact of changing between having the initialization semantics used in the base member initialization section versus doing the default constructor followed by the use of the assignment operator. Now to, to demonstrate this and to have it actually show us something meaningful, I've defined a, a little class here I call simple string. And we're gonna use simple string a lot in the various examples we talk about. And the reason for that is it was a way for me to demonstrate all kinds of cool stuff with uh, C++ very simply. So simple string is uh, just a very stripped down version of string and it is demonstrating a whole bunch of stuff. In this particular case, I'm just gonna use it to print out the values that the, the uh, methods and constructors and destructors and so on that are being called when we switch between the base member initialization semantics and the assignment semantics. One other thing I did wanna po point out though real quickly, because I had a good question about that today. Um, what does it mean to have something be explicit? So if you take a look in, a lot of the examples, I put the explicit keyword in front of the constructor. And the reason for doing this is because that keeps the C++ compiler from doing what it ordinarily does out of the box, which is to do so-called implicit conversions. So just to show you that, because that was also a good question I got asked today, if I take out the explicit keyword and I come over here to the main program, I can basically use I can basically have the compiler automatically convert the uh, convert strings or convert care stars like this into the the references uh, into into objects that are simple strings. It'll do that automatically. If I do instead, if I come over here and I make it explicit, then you don't get that explicit that implicit conversion. And so for, for this particular case, because we're passing it into the constructor, it doesn't matter. But there's other cases where you would need to be able to explicitly say, I want to use this thing as a simple string. You'd have to actually put the simple string constructor in there. So for this particular example, I'm not going to worry about that, but um, that's, that's the reason it's in here. All right, so we'll, we may come back. I'm certain we'll come back and talk more about explicit later, but I wanted to mention that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this program, compile and run it, and I'll, I'll later talk in more detail about simple string because it's very cool. Okay, so this is the output we get from the program that uses the base member initialization section. And if we go over here and we look at pair, you can see what's happening is that first we're getting a constructor called to convert the const care star parameter into a simple string. That's what these two things are. And then you'll see that the next thing that happens is we're going ahead and getting the copy constructor called to take the values that are passed by reference here and copy them into the first and into the second fields. So that's good, that's nice and lightweight. There's, there is a copy going on, but it's, it's okay because uh, because we kind of need to make a copy. Now, later when we talk about move semantics, we'll look at a whole bunch of other stuff, but that's a more advanced topic. Okay, so keep in mind that that's kind of what it looks like using this example. Now let's go back over here and let's comment out the base member initialization section. So now it's gonna look like this. And now let's go ahead and use the assignment operator instead of the base member initialization section. So now we're, we're actually initializing this in the body of the constructor. And look at the difference, wow. Um, so these two calls here are still what's used in main to initialize S1 and S2. So we kinda gotta, kinda gotta do that, that's okay. But then look what happens below. Uh, it is so much more verbose. So you can see here that the first thing that happened is because we didn't initialize anything in the base member initialization section, the compiler is obliged to call the default constructor on the two data members, on first and second. And so that's what these calls are. And if you go over here and look at the default constructor for this thing, you can see that it, it doesn't do a whole lot, but it is called. 
And in other examples, they would do more than that. Then we go ahead and we call the assignment operator here. And as you can see, um, we go ahead and call the assignment operator. And this is going to cost us you know, more because we're going to go ahead. Look, let's go look at the assignment operator for a second. If you look at the assignment operator for simple string, which we will look at in more detail later, you can see that the assignment operator goes ahead and makes a copy of the right-hand side. And then it goes ahead and it, so that's, that's this call here. And then it goes ahead and it does a swap. And we'll talk more about swap later. Swap's all about providing strong exception safety guarantees in a trivial way. So it calls a swap. And then it has to call the destructor in order to free up the memory. When it did the swap, it's going to free up the, the original left-hand side after we've swapped it. So as a result, we have like all of these calls are being made in order to be able to use the assignment semantics because assignment semantics are fundamentally more complicated than initialization semantics. And when we talk in more detail in the course about all this stuff, it'll, it'll make more sense. But the somewhat long answer to the short question, why do we use the base member initialization section? It's because we want to use initialization semantics, which are nice and concise, as opposed to using assignment semantics. So let me, let me comment this out again, because we don't really want this in the code, because it's not the purpose of this code. Um, and just you know, keep an eye on this again. I'm going to rerun the code using the base member initialization section. You can see, wow, that is so much more efficient. Now, we're going to talk later in the course about other techniques like copying by by value and value move, the, the, the move optimizations and so on. And that we'll also use this example to demonstrate some of that. But for right now, I just want to focus on the difference between base member initialization and using the default constructor and the assignment operator. So hopefully that helps explain my, uh, my somewhat pithy answer on the Piazza discussion forum to give you more insight about why the base member initialization section is so important.